please put your hands together for Keith Warburton. Thank you, Leah. Are we centred? I was impressed by the previous speakers. Um, they all seem to do it very impromptu. Uh, what I've got here is I'm going to stick to my script. Uh, I hope you don't mind too much. Um, it's a condensation of something that ran to about 50 pages, and you certainly don't want to hear that. Uh, back in 2008, I went for a walk. Now, I'd been for walks before, but never one like this. It meant staying out overnight and walking the next day, and walking the next day, and walking the next day. I walked for about five weeks with my rucksack on my back, and I walked for about 590 miles. The route I walked, the Camino de Santiago de Compostela, also known as The Way, is one of the ancient pilgrim routes for Christians, and it changed my life. Now, hearing me say that, you might think that, well, this guy had some big Christian experience along the way. No, that's not the case. Um, I wasn't converted along the way. I was an atheist before I started, uh, and I was an atheist when I finished. But it did change my life. For years, I'd wanted to quantify myself, to try and find out where I fitted into the world, to measure myself against it. And it seemed to me that the way to do that would be to push the world behind me one step at a time. I'd idly wondered at one stage whether I might walk the length of Europe from Calais to Gibraltar, but my natural timidity caused me to abandon that idea. Where would I find the paths? Where would I sleep? Carrying a tent and doing some wild camping held no appeal for me whatsoever. And then I heard about the Camino, which runs to Santiago de Compostela in Galicia, in northwest Spain. Now, we know pre precisely where the Camino ends, which is at the, at the cathedral there. But nobody can identify any common starting point, simply because it starts at your own front door, which is a reversal of life when you think about it. Most of us know where and when we began, but we have no idea where and when we'll end. The Camino properly starts when you first feel it calling you, which for me was about nine months before I set off. So I had plenty of time to worry about every aspect of it, especially my own fitness. As someone who'd led a largely sedentary life, the prospect of walking for so far was little short of terrifying, but I knew I had to do it. I could not ignore that call. As a non-religious person, my objective was never the cathedral in Santiago. I was heading to Finisterre. For hundreds of years, if not thousands, Finisterre, on the coast of Spain, was considered the westernmost point of Europe, and its name translates to Land's End, or more romantically, the end of the earth. Because the ancients simply did not know what might lie beyond the ocean and the setting sun. I managed to organise my life so that I was able to take six weeks off work. So the first thing the Camino taught me was that I was not actually indispensable. <coughs> On the 1st of June, I set off from St Jean-Pierre-de-Port in the French foothills of the Pyrenees, heading off to climb up and over into Spain. Now, if you're interested, there are plenty of books about the Camino, and I won't bore you with the highs and lows of the path, other than to say that about halfway along, you're some 600 feet higher than the top of Ben Nevis. I'll tell you instead about some truths you may find. I mentioned that I walk this as an atheist, but that's not to say atheists can't be spiritual. You'll find truths, revelations, and explanations along the way. But the reality is that most of us find the answers we need by examining ourselves, and the Camino gives you the opportunity to do that in a way that our daily lives generally don't. I'd had a hectic life and yearned for the simplicity of simply putting one foot in front of the other. Doing so, with each pace taking me a yard closer to my goal, helped me to see my life more clearly. Now, it also helps that on the Camino, one has the company and kindness of strangers. Very often, we can talk more openly and honestly with strangers than we can do with anyone else. For one thing, we don't expect to ever have to see them again. <laughs> for the first three days, it rained virtually non-stop. One evening I was down at the river washing the mud off my boots when I met Margaret, a lady from New Zealand. You might say she wasn't ideally made for walking, for she was short and chubby and rather not need. I adjusted my initial view when I learned she'd already walked from the middle of France and had done over 500 miles. 
so that she was going to end up walking twice as far as me. Next day, after I'd walked an hour or so, I caught up with her and we walked together for a few minutes before she said, you go on, I'm only slow. And so we bid farewell. About a week later, I was walking and saw a familiar figure ahead of me. And after a while, I caught up with Margaret again. <laughs> this happened twice more. You see, as egotistical me pushed on hard and had to take a day off every week to recover, Margaret just plodded on. My ego took a bit of a bash. Sharing is the key to the Camino. You share the same basic goal. You share the pain. You share the food. You share the accommodation. And you share the joy of achieving common goals or perhaps helping others to achieve. And you share your thoughts and feelings with others and they with you. The Camino's gift to me was the opportunity to think. And it forced me to face up to the fact that I really shouldn't be married anymore. Indeed, that I probably should never have got married. I realised that when I got home I would have to take steps to separate from my wife. And the prospect was pretty awful. We'd been married 34 years. But... We've been gifted only one life and we owe it to that life to make it as happy and fulfilled as possible and indeed not to limit anyone else's experience of their life. There are tall white marker stones along the way, usually about a metre tall and inscribed with the distance remaining to Santiago. After Santiago the markers start again as you head off to Finisterre and as they counted down my heart grew increasingly heavy as I faced up to what I must do when I arrived home, the bombshell I must drop. The markers become more frequent as you reach your goal. Previously, they were every five kilometers or so, then it becomes 1K, and then 0.5 of a kilometer. Finally, you reach the lighthouse on the headland, where the plaque on the marker stone says 0.0K. I went out onto the rocks and wept, as do so many people who've been focused on this objective for so long. My feet dragged as I walked back from the rocks until I saw the marker again. But now I was looking at it from the other side and there was no countdown plaque to be seen. The back of the stone was blank, pure and unwritten. It wasn't the last marker stone, it was the first one. The point that endings are just beginnings might be what I'd leave you with. However, I walked the Camino again in 2016 I wanted to do it without carrying that emotional burden from eight years previously. I spent a fair bit of my time with an Episcopalian priest, Ernesto, and we respected each other's belief. We're good friends. He was quite taken with my view of God and subsequently used it in a sermon, or so he said, and it's simply this. If you want to find your God, but don't perhaps know where to start, just spell it differently. G-O-O-D. And if you carry goodness in your heart, if you try to do good things, you'll find that your God isn't far away. Thank you. Thank you.